we're live here at Buffalo Trace Distillery for another episode of Whiskey Wednesday. And this is going to be a really, really special treat for all of us. Uh, we have Drew and Emily, and we're going to talk about some blending. Uh, Drew, yes. uh, let's kick it off. Wow, my favorite day of the week, obviously. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the art of blending bourbon. And that's kind of a misnomer, and I'll explain a little bit later about that. But I just want to bring back, for those who haven't uh, really watched this before, my background has been in the industry now for over 40 years. And I started out uh, in a company called Seagram, and actually Seagram was world renowned for blending. So that's where I really cut my teeth and I learned from the best in the business. And then about 17 years ago, I came down here to Buffalo Trace and brought all that knowledge and skill to the distillery. And I think it's really unique because of having that background and coming here and working with these fantastic products here at Buffalo Trace has been a tremendous advantage uh, for us. And it's really been helpful. Um, and today we're here at our top secret location uh, at Buffalo Trace. This is where we do all the really good stuff. We make new products and we taste a lot of whiskey. So welcome to my office actually. And today we're really uh, uh, honored to have Emily who helps us day in and day out and make these great products. And Emily, her background is uh, now two and a half years you've been at Buffalo mm -hmm. Trace. And she started right here in the lab as a lab technician. And uh, this job that she has is the most sought after, sought after job in the, I think probably in the United States. But it's quite a unique job because you get to work in the lab and you get to handle all these products. And she's been very good at that. I think her background, what is it, uh, chemistry? Chemical engineering. Chemical engineering. So we just don't hire anybody off the street. Actually, she went through quite a rigorous process entering, not just from an educational point of view, but from uh, a skill, a taste, a sensory skill. She had to pass some tests before she was actually hired. Was that fun? Yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> Nervous too, right? <laughs> so today, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about blending. And I would like, you know, I've been doing this for over 40 years. And I always bring my picture, if you haven't seen my picture here, of early 1980s. So there's my uh, blending uh, back in 1980s. And now we're actually in the 2020s. So it's been over 40 years. And... The traditional sense of blending is mixing and mingling of different types of products. Uh, and I'll give you some examples. Canadian whiskey, for instance. Here's an example. Uh, that's a traditionally blended product. So different components going together to make a unique product. Then we have one like rum. That's actually different marks put together, give you different products. We have another one here that we have Young and Wolf. And then there's cognac, where you put different uh, components together to get a final blend. And of course, scotch, where you actually have different components making. Uh, and also, last but not least, Irish whiskey. So you mix your grain whiskeys with your malt whiskeys, your pot still whiskeys, and you make this product. So that's the traditional sense of blending. And when we talk about bourbon specifically, it may be looked upon as, let me see, let's put it this way. Every bourbon is blended, how's that? Except for one, and that's a single barrel, which is not blended, obviously. And when we say blending, if you look at a brand like Buffalo Trace, this is put together, it's not so much it's different whiskeys, it's the same whiskey style, but it's actually from different places in all our different warehouses. So it's, it's a mingling effect or a marrying of those things. So in essence, it's blending, but uh, on a finer level, it's just a mixing of those to make sure it matches the final product. So other examples would be our Stag Junior, our Stag Senior, uh, our Weller, for instance, our Sazerac Rye. So these are all products that we have a certain taste profile that we try to match as blenders day in and day out based on where those components come from in our warehouses and the type of whiskeys they are. 
And then you go one more step if you have a new product. And this is really a lot of fun. This is where I really enjoy is our E.H. Taylor, for instance, our 18-year-old marriage. So that's a mixture of three different type of whiskeys, two of them being rye bourbons and one being wheat, and then you end up with that product. So that's really cool. And then the piece to resistance is when we have a free hand at blending, uh, we make products like this, Mr. Sam, which is a tribute whiskey to Sam Bronfman, and basically that's a blended whiskey of North American whiskeys. So that's when a blender really enjoys what they do. So I want to give you that background, but the outcome is always the same, whether it's blending, marrying, mingling, is that we want a product that's consistent. So that's why we blend, is we want that consistency from batch to batch. So when you buy a bottle of Buffalo Trace, or Weller 12, or Stag, or Sazerac Rye, it tastes relatively the same as it did previously. And that's one of the main jobs of a blender is that consistency, that uniformity of flavor. The only difference is a little exception to that, or two exceptions, is single barrel, where you want that slight difference from barrel to barrel. And the other exception is when you do an antique collection like George T. Stagg or William LaRue Weller, uh, every year we release it, it's going to be slightly different. It's in the same taste profile, but just slightly different because of where we choose the barrels from. And that's why you get that difference, for instance, with the Stagg of being a higher proof and a lower proof. It really depends on the barrel selection process. So, Drew Emily, yes. we, have, we have folks from all over, uh, as usual, we've got fans all over the country and, and elsewhere. We have Jordan from Phoenix, Arizona, he's watching. Uh, we have Jim from uh, Louisiana, he says that it was a chapter of the original Bourbon Club, so there's Jim. Uh, also, we've got some fans of, uh, it looks like E.H. Taylor's Season Wood, oh, we've yeah. got some folks that love that one, uh, but again, Lots of folks chiming in here, and we'll get some questions going for you, uh, for well, I, you soon. I certainly like all those warm climates compared to here. Today <laughs> it's been pretty cold, just above freezing. So. so Snowy. Snowy, too. Yes, we had snow. <laughs> so lots of people ask me, Tim, um, how do you become a master blender? And actually, the answer is quite simple. It's actually just like Emily is going through her career path right now is you start at the bottom like me as a being a technician. I started as a technician and over the years I learned from the masters and that was at Seagram at the time. So you learn from people like that and it's just a matter of time and experience because some of the skills you need as a master blender is that experience obviously. You have to know what's right, right and wrong and the taste profiles of different whiskeys and different products. You have that language or that terminology that you use when you look at products. Uh, you, you need the memory, of course, because you know you have to know what goes well with certain things. So, in, for instance, if you're blending a a whiskey and you have a base whiskey and you have a flavoring whiskey, how do they interact? And all those things are experience that really takes time and patience. So you need all those types of skills. To become a blender and also you have to learn under the master you have to learn under someone who knows what they're doing and how you know hopefully uh, learn well so those are important things as a blender so we do blend for that unique uniqueness of flavor and that uh, that continuity from batch to batch to batch like we do with buffalo trace yeah, I, would, I would imagine the batch to batch like you alluded to earlier is the difficult thing it's, you know buffalo trace if you're a Buffalo Trace fan, you're going to have bottles from today, maybe the next five years, and you might have some from a few years ago. And, and if you're a fan of that brand, you know what it tastes like, and you expect a certain thing out of every bottle. Yeah. So I'm assuming it's yes. a big job for you. It is a big job, and it's an important part of what we do. Uh, it's that maintenance, basically. So like, for instance, Buffalo Trace goes back to the second marriage that we've made. This goes back to the standard. This is 
the second marriage that we deemed as being the best, everything we make is judged against that standard. So that gives you an idea that that consistency is very important to us. And it goes back even further to Harlan and the distilling. Uh, the master distiller wants to be as consistent as possible. So that's really important. But it's also exciting as a blender to do products like this, the stag, so that you get some variability from year to year. And it gives you kind of that artistic freedom to try something different. And then when you have new products like the E.H. Taylor, the, the 18 year old marriage or uh, Mr. Sam, you really get to expand your horizons and really it's blank slate. You can make it taste the way you want it to taste. So you can go from the consistency to the uniqueness of flavor with products like this that nobody's ever tasted. And blending is really uh, the mixing and mingling such that you get a product that's completely different from the individual components. So my mentor always said the sum is better than the individual parts. In other words, you can't get uh, one component of that to taste like the final blend. It's like, it's like if you were making a recipe, uh, make, making a, a lasagna that you like. It's, you can taste the certain components, but the real taste or the best taste is when you put them all together and eat it all together in that recipe. So that's kind of like what we do. Or a, I played the clarinet when I was a youngster at school. And that's a long story because I really wanted to learn typing but I got into the instrument uh, department and it's like an orchestra. That clarinet might sound great, but if you put it together with other instruments, like other whiskeys, it can be magnificent. So I really believe that a blended product can be the greatest of, the, of any component and it can be the best thing possible. So I'm a little biased because I've been doing this for 40 plus years, but I believe in that very strongly. And so, when, we have a few comments. Yeah, I'm sure. Jump in. Zach Brooks has uh, commented a few times here. I just want to call out a few. Uh, he says, um, "My favorite word Drew says is complexities. Every time I take a sip of bourbon, I can hear him saying, you can just taste all the complexities.' And it, it's funny. I mean, you're, you're, he's exactly right. Yeah, isn't he bright? Yeah. Um, but he's also uh, asking, like, um, let's see, we have." We have, okay, Mr. Sam 2.0, somebody's asking about that. Um, it's coming out. Okay. Be and patient. I'm looking for, the, there was a question here, and I'm scrolling, scrolling. we got a bunch coming through all at once. But uh, it was about, okay, if you could, um, well, shoot, where'd it go? Oh, Brian asked, if one was to try to blend a few whiskey brands together on their own, Great. What are a couple general practices you might suggest, such as various ages, complementary flavors, etc.? If somebody wants to kind of do dabble in this and do this at home, is there any, any tips? It's very dangerous to do that. <laughs> no, uh, actually, the way I do, the way I do it is you have to have a vision of where you want to go, and that's that's really important because if you just want to do it and have fun, that's great too. But when I work at any new product development, you have to have a vision where you want to go. So if you want something, say you want something that's quite spicy but balanced, maybe you would take one that's really hot on, in, in terms of spiciness and then moderate that with something a little more mild, uh, more sweet, more fruity. So depending on what you want and what you're looking for, you can design it. I, these are designer blends basically. And you base it on the individual components. So you look at each one individually and then you have your, your, your guide or your, your goal, what you want, and then you try to put them together. And that's what Emily and I do a lot, is we try to uh, make different blends because sometimes you think this one is really good and you put it into this blend and it doesn't taste so good when you put it together. So it's really a trial and error process and we spend a lot of time doing that. And, you, and she can tell you firsthand, it's, it's a lot of work and it's, it's, it's tedious actually. So that's what I would recommend is find what you want, what you like and design it that way. Mm, that's great, thank you Drew. And they are having a little hard time hearing me so I'll speak up even more. But 
Uh, Emily, I know we haven't jumped into, I know you're going to give us a demonstration of blending, but somebody does ask, do you blend it foolproof, even if you will be bringing it back down, or do you water it, uh, or do you water back components good to proof mm -hmm. before blending, aside from cast strength, obviously. So do you blend it foolproof? So we actually have a calculator that I was going to show. Um, okay. So if we're making a blend that for a product that we're going to have at 80 proof, um, we can put that into our calculator and the proofs of the individual components and we will blend it with water to get it down to that 80 proof. And you know, if something's at 180 proof, we will use less of that because it's so high and we use more water to make up for it. So, so we do blend to the proof that we're going to bottle at. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. But sometimes, sometimes we um, will blend at everything at high proof and then we'll taste it. If it's close, then we start watering it down to certain proofs to see how it reacts to the water. Because sometimes it's too hot for most people, it's too high, the alcohol proof. So lots of times we'll have it where we'll be at 106, say, proof. And we'll water it down to, say, 96 and see the difference between the two. Sometimes the flavors come out at different proofs. So depending, there's a lot of trial and error. Sure, it's it's exactly. just not a... Yeah. Is that mainly for a new blend? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a new blend, I'm sure you right. blend it differently so you understand how it's reacting. So let's let's look at it from that process point of view. Is we look at things uh, like Buffalo Trace products or Sazerac rye products, and we'll talk about that. We'll actually go see it in another secret location, how we do that. But Emily will show you how we do a new product. This is an example of a new product process. Great. Since and I'm actually going to, would this be a good time? I'm going to get in a little closer. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So she showed you the formula. Yeah. yeah. So whenever we're making a new product blend, um, we'll usually start out um, with tasting all the individual components and seeing uh, what those look like by themselves. And then as Drew said, he usually has a vision for where we want to go with that product. And so based on how those components taste, we will make a blend and then we'll use our blending calculator that I showed to calculate out how much we're going to add and then, you know, just measure them out and then add them to a beaker and, and then we'll taste that blend. And one thing to note is that usually, the f actually always, the first blend is never, yeah. never good. <laughs> never. <laughs> So we do um, a lot of iterations of each blend before we get there, and that's that's, that's where the work water comes there. in. So yeah, this was water to okay. to blend it down to 80 proof, and so yeah, it's that's where all the work comes in is through all the iterations of each blend. And so you predetermine some of those based on either age or or profile, and you're like, okay, this is a this is a nice, this is probably going to be a nice complex flavor profile based on what we already know, mm -hmm. based on a proof or an age or a location. And then uh, you just start, you just start from there, right? Yeah. Wow. And so once we have the blend, we'll taste it and evaluate it from a sensory perspective and um, go from there. Okay. So what proof would this be? At? The, the one we're tasting, I just added water to make okay. it around 80 proof. Okay. See now this yeah. one is really spicy. It's got a lot of rye spiciness. And if that was the vision, uh, then that would be great. At least it's a good start. Good. Or if it's not balanced the way I like, depending on the vision that you had for it, you may start changing some of the components. And sometimes people think you need to make big changes, like, wow, you, you put in 20% of this component. It actually, sometimes we're down to 0, 0.0 parts uh, of the blend that make a huge difference in the overall taste. It's mm -hmm. actually, sometimes we look at it and we go, wow, that's so small, I can hardly measure it. Uh, but is that important and is that fine tuning? And it does make a difference. It does make a difference on taste. So that's how we, that's how we develop a new product is the way we just described now. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, I know they can't hear me too well, but you're talking about vision a lot. So you have a predetermined vision Mm -hmm. for a certain product and, and you're trying to achieve that vision. Somebody does ask, um, Danny Lash does ask, and if you don't mind me asking Drew, what was the vision behind the 18-year marriage? You just pulled that up. Um, 
Can you give us a little insight? Because it was a blended product. We wanted a blended product. So we had the, you know, we only have so many 18 year old products available. So you pick out the 18 year old products <clears throat> and we basically made a blend of those components that we had available. And then you just fine tune it to give you this product. It's really quite simple. So sometimes it's my vision on what I want it to taste like, like Mr. Sam was. And sometimes it's the marketing team wants a certain vision that we have to work and make that product based on that. So it just depends on the circumstances. So it depends on whose vision it is. Sure. And I would really like it if we have time to show you our other secret location here at Buffalo Trace and how we do. So this was the new product. This is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis on blending and making sure that when we mingle things together, uh, we get the best possible product. If that's all right. Let's do it. Let's go for a walk. Okay, let's go. Okay. Yeah, we have to pick, pick up our cords here, so just give us, <laughs> it's like a tail or something, huh? Go ahead and stay six feet. Up. Now, you have to forget everything you're gonna see here, so. It's very top secret. It's very top secret. Very few people come here. As a matter of fact, Julian Van Winkle was just in tasting some Van Winkle, and we actually have a taster coming in here, okay. and that's Dawn. <laughs> Hello, Dawn. Hi there, how are you? <laughs> You're in front of two million people right now, Dawn, so <laughs> oh, don't be nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's yeah, have a seat. Yeah, yeah. You can go over there. So here, Julian was just sitting here looking at uh, some Van Winkle 10 year old. Mm -hmm. This is for an upcoming release. And that's pretty exciting because very few people see this. And so Julian would actually go through this process when we mingle these together into the final blend or the blend. Um, and people don't like to say blend with uh, bourbons. Um, so traditionally, people call it mingling because it's the same whiskeys, but different locations and, and different parts of the warehouse. So we have our standard, and then we have each one of these represents a single barrel of the 10-year-old. And each of these have to be assessed by our panelists, and each one of these happens to be diluted. So we want to basically see differences between these and the dilution is the best way. So what we do is we would compare the standard to the single barrel. And if, it, if it's in that taste profile that we're looking for from, from the standard, we would approve that. And then we'd go through all this. And I, I, I made a mistake, I'm sorry, we taste too. Mm. <laughs> my favorite part but you see I have to spit unfortunately sure. because we're here to see differences and pick out the ones that are not acceptable so Julian would actually go through or Preston each one of these samples and if there's anything uh, that didn't meet the taste profile if there's something wrong or it just doesn't match the taste profile we would turn that bottle or that barrel and we would not use it for this particular marriage and then our whole taste panel that Emily coordinates would do the same thing. So individually, our taste panel goes through this whole process. So there's good, probably six to seven people at least for this that would actually go through this process and look to make sure everything uh, meets the standard. And so Nick Perry asks, are you comparing the last year's standard to what's on the table? When uh we this talk about standard there's probably a standard here yeah but yes back. it probably is but we make sure it's the standard it matches the previous standard yeah. so there's a process that we use to do that just like buffalo trace goes back to the second batch ever made so we don't have drift as much as possible mm -hmm. and so that that marriage of mingling of different whiskies is in, in essence a blending process even though it's the same whiskey because if we don't like the taste, we would actually look at what's making it not taste well, and we would take it out. So that process happens here every day. And Emily is responsible for that. She does that every single day. 
So all these glasses and uh, samples, and she's part of the pro taste panel too. So it's quite, quite, uh, I think, stringent. Probably the most in the industry. Well, it's Brandon Webb says, Emily, uh, yeah. best job ever. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah, maybe tell us a little bit about it, like your day to day. I mean, Drew's going through this great. <laughs> it's great but, it's uh, not as awesome as they think when she gets, she's in here at 6.30. So, yeah, I come in early every morning and I set up the tasting room for, every, for the tasting panel. And so, you know, coordinating with production and finding out what they need and then setting this up and then you know I send out an email for the tasting panel to come on by and taste and then you know I do a lot of blending throughout the day and it kind of varies based on what new products are coming out and things like that but you know is there, is there a big difference for you like when you're blending tasting bourbons versus non bourbons I mean there's so many other products that you guys are touching here is that process any different for say the rums or anything else yeah, it, it, it's it it's quite it it's quite different. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, this is more um, matching the taste profile. Sometimes the like the other products that we would happen to blend tend to be new products as opposed to matching a certain product. So that that's the biggest difference. Gotcha. And those those are fun too. This is fun alone, but making new products is the most fun. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, somebody commented. Uh, Something about Wheel of Fortune, what was it? I don't know, but it was it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, now that's a Wheel of Fortune from Tony, so yeah, exactly. There you go, yeah. Tony. Very cool. So on a typical day, how many different brands will you maybe, will you work on? Is it a tasting of multiple brands or is it you focus one day on Weller and one day on another brand or how's that work? You could probably just scan and show the tables. Okay. So that one is Weller. This one happens to be, be Elmer T. Lee. So that's a good sign for, for so yeah, there's a, Elmer T. Lee. Huh? Actually, Dawn is the one who actually uh, determines what we look at. <laughs> she's, <laughs> and she's a taste panel member too. Okay. So. And so when we do this, this is separate from any of the other products that we do, but this is an essential part of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, I mean, how much cooler can you get than coming in here? This is really neat. I, I always love, I've only been in here a few times, Drew, especially before COVID, I was in here a few times, but since COVID, uh, you know, it's been pretty strict on everybody. But you know, this is a really tough job, but someone has to do it, right? That's right. Um, yeah, somebody says I'm drooling. Yeah, lots of great things. But uh, you know, we're we know you're both very busy. We're we're approaching 30 minutes. Any any last words from either one of you? Um, would you like to cover anything that you haven't? Or and I'll keep searching for some of these questions. But if there's anything else you want to add, we're getting a little short on time. No, it's just that the art of blending. Um, it 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 really is. Uh, more than just mixing different types of products, it's also mixing the same product, but because each one is different, each barrel is different, you are blending in a sense. So that, that whole art of blending really pertains to this. Actually, when I first came to Buffalo Trace, I wasn't used to single barrels. So if you look at Elmer T. Lee, which is a single barrel, um, I wasn't accustomed to that. There's variability from barrel to barrel and depending on the warehouse. So when I was making other products like a, uh, a blend uh, of Canadian whiskey, for instance, back when I first started, it was consistency. And when I came here 17 years ago, it was all about making it slightly different, which has really boggled my mind back at the beginning. But now I'm so used to it, it's in the same taste profile, it's just not excessively different. So that was a big change, but that art of blending really, really helped me here at Buffalo Trace and really focus in on the subtleties that we see here at Buffalo Trace. Yeah, and um, you know, Ryan's looks like Ryan's a fan of Elmer T. Lee. Wishes oh, good. More. Uh, Alex Clark says, thanks for all the hard work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason says, thanks for your time. Uh, lots of, uh, Jeff says the hard work shows in the finished product. Yeah, we spend so, a lot of time and it's a lot of hard work and we enjoy it every minute. That's great. It's great. Emily, quick question for you. Yeah. Is there, 
uh, is there a certain taste profile or is there a certain part of the job that you've just really grown to love? Is there a brand or, or part of the job that's that really sticks out to you? Because you've been here two and a half years mm -hmm. and I'm sure you've, you've found a few things that, that you've really loved. Um, well, to be honest, my favorite product is Buffalo Trace. I know it's it's the most popular, but it's I think it's a really good product for the price, and it's my favorite. So that's great. That's great. Um, and we know that there's a big expansion going on here. I always love to touch on that because there's a lot of folks that want more product, more Buffalo Trace, more Weller, things like that. So I always like to touch on it that there is a lot more whiskey coming. Yeah, well, I keep telling people the 17 years I've been here at Buffalo Trace, we've made more every single year. It's just never enough. So hopefully this expansion will take care of that forever, but it probably won't. Yeah. Yeah. But the, remember, it takes a lot of years to age our products, so it takes a few years to catch up. So we even, even though we're putting it away, it takes many years to age. And in a lot of products we target like Buffalo Trace eight years, that's a long time to wait to get more. So. That's right, that's right. Well, thank you both so much. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure. And Come again. Great to meet you and yeah. I'm sure we'll do more in the, in the future, so. All right, thanks bo to both of you. I'm gonna take a little peek at this whiskey table one more time before we close out. Okay. All right, thanks everybody. Bye-bye.